Coming in with a Fox News alert, a temporary ceasefire in Gaza, now in its third day as part of the deal to free more innocent hostages from Hamas terrorists and bring them back to Israel today. 13 were finally freed in yesterday's second round, reuniting with their loved ones, and 13 the day before. But no Americans yet. Retired U.S. Air Force Brigadier General Rob Spalding joins us now. General, thank you for joining us. I, I really want to ask you, uh, you know, you're, as, a, as a member of the Air Force, you understand the surveillance side of things probably a little bit more than myself as a Marine. I really want to ask you about the tactical side of this. We have talked about the diplomacy and the hostages a lot. What we haven't talked about is what Israel gave up strategically and tactically on the battlefield in order to let this swap happen. The one thing I found incredibly interesting that we haven't talked much about is this idea that Israel halted their aerial surveillance. That was a demand from Hamas, which obviously is very important. But my, my question is, does Hamas even have the ability to know if they're being surveyed, surveilled, uh, you know, with some of the assets that Israel may have? Well, I mean, that, that's a great question. I doubt they could uh, tell you that, um, you know, satellites are observing them from space, and that, that's part of the aerial surveillance. So it's not just aircraft, it's also uh, from space. But, you know, I think these uh, hostage uh, returns have been designed to maximize anguish for the families and, and thereby increase the pressure on Israel to, to pause this. And as long as it's paused, Hamas is able to rebuild infrastructure and put themselves in position to, you know, make it even more deadly for IDF troops. You know, you worked in the White House first year of the Trump administration. You understand the tensions that can be in an administration trying to do something like this so sensitive. I think we've talked a lot about Biden putting pressure probably on Israel to get hostages back, to be a part of the ceasefire. What does that atmosphere look like in the White House? What kind of pressure is the White House feeling right now? Well, I mean, think about it. What we've done, you know, not just from the um, from the government perspective, but now it's in our institution. So if you go back all the way to the end of the Cold War, you know, some of the leaders from uh, Eastern European countries that were liberated from the Soviet Union came to the United States. They went to Voice of America. They went to Radio for Europe. They said, thank you for speaking the truth. Today, our institutions are entirely the opposite. Our university systems are supporting Hamas. Our our uh, social media is supporting Hamas. And so as long as this drags on, you know, all of this pressure is not just coming in terms of, hey, let's return the uh, let's return the um, hostages, but let's support Hamas because, you know, they're, um, you know, they're they're under, you know, so much pressure and we need to, you know, be think of them. Even chat GPT is supportive of Hamas. So I think our AI is being trained this way. This wow. is a big problem. It's an ideological fight much more so than just a fight with Hamas, and we need to get after it. General, thank you for leading troops in your career and serving our country. Thank you for coming on today, sharing some of your expertise with us. We appreciate you.